I decided that um, I should not present uh, the course itself because everyone knows the structure and we know the structure. And uh, I have the book, this is yours, okay? How to write a research paper. The course is based on this book or vice versa. The book is based on the course, the course is based on the book, whatever you prefer. Uh, what I'm going to speak about today is how to write a research paper and what I personally focus on while teaching PhD students. And this is universal for all disciplines. Hard science, soft science, whatever. And my first question is, what do you think is the main reason why articles do not give examples? So what is the main reason? Poor you. So we're language teachers, most of us, or some of us. So when we're speaking about English, but is English the problem for those who do not know English well enough to get published? So the, the, the question to you. What do you think is the main reason? What is English? The quality of English. Yeah. Poor uh -huh. English. Because yeah. quality of English. Okay. Poor English. Non academic style. Um, what do you mean by non academic style? Mm. <laughs> so we're speaking about, uh, as you see, uh, research writing for international publications. What does it mean to write for an international publication? International journal. What makes English international? So when you speak about academic English, what English do you mean? Mm. So what is formal the name? Formal English? Huh? Formal? Formal? Yeah. Uh, how formal should it be? Well, official, just based on official documents, some official language reaching terms. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. It has to um, meet the requirements. Who's? Uh, journals okay, very good. So when you speak about journals requirements, what are the requirements? And I will show you the requirements of the journal. Okay, let's go. Okay. This is a certain structure. Certain so structure. Uh, you would be surprised that uh, we speak about EMRAT format and the book is based on the EMRAT format <coughs> introduction discussion methods, materials, and results, blah, 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 blah. But that's not the most typical structure. And uh, high impact factor journals sometimes do not require any structure. Mm -hmm. They don't even have abstracts because they say abstract is not provided. So sometimes they don't even require abstracts. And they're just solid text. No introduction, no methodology, just full text. Which ones? Uh, it might be in physics or mathematics. Uh -huh. Yeah, once. Uh, Doctor of Science came up to me just asking to edit his paper. And uh, very snobbishly, I looked at the paper and said, Don't you know that you need to structure your paper? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he said, No, I don't. No, you don't know, or you don't want to, or you don't need to. And then I found out that the journal does not require any structure, whatever you wish. So, any logic, you feel. Like. So structure is not the key point. Mm -hmm. okay. So uh, in Highland, language teachers they know in Highland. Attitude surveys reveal English as an additional language because these days that's a new term. Not English as a foreign language, just additional language. Okay. Uh, authors often believe uh, that just like in the text believe believe. Believe, want to believe, just a sec. Uh, believe editors and referees are prejudiced against them for any non standard language uses. We believe. Whatever the reasons, they appear to like. Lena, can, can you click just on the one line? Uh, Which one? It's all kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah, this one. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Whatever the reasons, they appear to lie outside any that its authors may have had in producing written English. So, okay, sorry. English is not the problem.
No matter how you write in English, English comes last. But what comes first? That's the question. And uh, I'm going to tell you just a few, a few things, and these are the theories I based on uh, while teaching academic writing. Rhetorical aspect of research writing to trust your rhetoric. Crisis maxims of conversation and cognitive flow of fear. These are just the pillars for research writing. Uh, the rhetorical aspects. That's what I find most important. And as you all know, um, English, the English speaking world was, I do not know why, what the reason was, selected, selected a philosophy. And they base all their writing and speaking or whatever on the concept, on the theory of this philosopher. Who is that? So when we when we mean English writing, the writing in English, we always associate this writing with what philosopher? With the most sexy and this uh, book. Huh? Yeah. Aristotle. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay? So Aristotelian logic is the fun, is the base for English writing. For some reason, we decided not to select Aristotle, who is our philosopher. Definitely not Aristotle. Lenin. <laughs> before Marx. Marx. No, before Aristotle. No, 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 no. no. Aristotle. What is Aristotle? So, um, Russell, no, no, Russell. So, no, the thing is that, what is Aristotelian logic? So, you put forward the statement, for example, life is great. Being Russian, I assume that you agree that life is great. And I don't need to prove it. Just I believe that we are in the same boat, and you also think that life is great. According to Aristotelian logic, I immediately need to prove it. Why? I think so. This is not my personal opinion. So there should be facts, solid evidence. I need to provide facts. And then I need to decide whether it's a fact or it's just my perception. Some authority. Name and sense. Okay. Oh, I say that. Then, or whatever. So you need to put forward the statement. That's what we almost never do in research writing. We say, it's this. This is a promising material. Promising. What does it promise? Who does it promise? What? But we assume that everyone should trust my writing, which is not the case. So who is our philosopher? Hegel. Hegelian logic. Uh -huh. And now you will all remember your school years. Thesis, antithesis, synthesis. And then the Anglo Saxon will say, okay, well, let's focus on the thesis. The thesis and this antithesis, we deviate. Mm -hmm. so come on. Within the framework of this one paper, you need to prove this first. Then write another paper with your antithesis. So according to this logic, so we start with ethers. What is ethers? Uh, presentation skills over the They say, Ivan Ivanov, the presentation, for example, whatever, Ivan Ivanov, not Einstein. Why should I know Ivan Ivanov? So there should be authority. There should be some credentials. Who are you that I should trust you? First, I need to trust you. So then, in your presentation or in your research paper, you need to prove that you work with uh, a stellar team or university. So there should be some credentials. I should trust you in the first place, right? But that's not enough, because there should be logos. What is logos? Persuasion through rational arguments. 
there should be solid evidence, and then I need to decide whether it's a fact or whether it, it is the so-called fact or what is that. I have to be very selective, especially in research writing. So the paper should be logically structured. So that's my logic. I need to provide citations, primary sources, only then secondary sources. And when I ask my patient students, do you know the difference between primary and secondary sources? They say secondary are less important. No. But first you need to find the first, the primary source. So what you cite, who you cite, what papers you cite, they also speak about your credentials and the logic. But that's not enough. Because there's others. Persuasion through emotional appeals. And there's, okay, I love the lecture that I sometimes give. It, it's called Twist and Shout, you know the Beatles song. Twist and Shout in Research Writing. Should you twist and shout in research writing? Or you should be very academic, should be very formal. Huh? No, it doesn't. We speak about international publications, and in international publications you should twist and shout in your research writing. How can you twist and shout? I will give you an example. Uh, you know that when you write a paper, when we speak about titles, and they say that a title for a research paper should not contain a question mark. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Should it? So you, 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 your title has a question mark. Is it no or oh, yes? No or oh, yes? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And uh, there were some physicists and they wrote the paper. I do not know why they worry about this, uh, but they keep thinking about neutrino, you know, elementary particle, neutrino. And the title, the, the title was, Can Neutrino Travel Faster Than Light? Intriguing. Uh -huh. Do you know what they had in the abstract? Just abstract. Very serious paper. Astrophysics or whatever, nuclear physics. And the abstract contain only two words. Probably not. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Can you imagine? That's twisting and shouting and research writing. Curious. Yeah? I was curious to know. Yeah? Probably not. That's it. No 250 words. No background. No. Just two words. Probably not. And then, being a linguist, I wanted to read the paper. Uh, some time ago, I had to edit a paper in microbiology or something. Okay, very serious stuff. I, I didn't understand the word, but I, I, I had to edit this paper. It was long. 30 pages. Tiny font. Okay? And every now and then, I, I dozed. Because that was impossible to But Every now and then, the authors ask me a question. <laughs> Can these cells be found in liver? So, yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. Cancer cells, isn't it? That's interesting. Okay. Did I also have liver? So, what about my liver? Uh -huh. Okay, I woke up and, and continued reading. Then again, and then another question. That's twisting and shouting. So you need to teach your students how to twist and shout and research writing, how to make them interesting and intriguing, and that's your favorite. But what is the most important note is, not this, you know, authors, lovers, papers, what else? I will tell you another story. Joshua Bell. Well, I didn't play. You know mm -hmm. Joshua Bell. A uh, contemporary violinist, and uh, he is supposed to be the most attractive man. He is in a list of the hundred most attractive men on our planet. Uh, and he plays a sturdy body, okay? Uh, and it costs two million five hundred dollars. That's his ethos, okay? Joshua Bell and his violin, 
and it's very difficult to get tickets for his concert and if you do they cost a lot a hundred and then New York Times decided to conduct an experiment do you know about it? Yeah, yeah yeah I heard about it yeah George Orwell mm -hmm. very attractive mm -hmm. Start about it. he selected the best musical pieces mm -hmm. and he went to New York where he played all day <laughs> and he earned only thirty dollars <laughs> because of Kairos. What is Kairos? Appropriate time and place. Aww. Appropriate time and place. So when you write a paper, it has to be contemporary. Yeah? And it has to be uh, it, it has to be directed to targeted audience. So if your chorus is wrong, the rest is meaningless. It doesn't matter whether you are a noble writer, or if you are logical, or if you are very emotional, you twist and shout all the time, but chorus is wrong. So when you write, you should always think about this rhetorical mold. Potentials, logical structure, even if it is not structured, the way you, you, you create the flow of your writing. Then papers, how emotional you are, and you have to be emotional while writing for international publications, and okay, you select the right journal for your publication, and you select the right audience for your publication. Then, you are successful. So, uh, just to skip, contrastive rhetoric. Have you heard about this theory? Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Again, we are different. Robert Kaplan in 1966 developed the theory. Contrastive thought patterns in intercultural education. Mm -hmm. Different nations have different thought patterns. Mm -hmm. We think in a different way. Where are Russians and where are Anglo-Saxons? Russians? The first, the first one. one. The first one is uh, Anglo-Saxons. The first one. The Anglo-Saxons. Oh, Anglo yeah. Ah, again, okay, where, where are we? <laughs> the last one. <laughs> the, last one. <laughs> the, the third one. one. The third one. Mm. No, the last one. No, no the second. <laughs> <laughs> I was right. <laughs> so what does it mean? Aristotelian logic, from A to B, no deviations. Mm -hmm. You put forward some statement, you focus. Mm -hmm. huh? What do we do? Even worse than this. Mm -hmm. Dotted line, no beginning, no end. Mm -hmm. We want to show that we have encyclopedic knowledge. We say, that's also interesting, and this is interesting, and this is important, and this is also important. By the way, I said, come mm -hmm. on, get back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, me personally, I'm writing a paper. I've been writing this paper for two or three years mm -hmm. because of this. Because I have three different thoughts. Yeah, I need to choose one. And I need to write about this. But I say, no, this is also important. And this is also important. And that's what also of great interest to the world. And I debate all the time. I cannot find this focus because of this. Going this way, that way, and that is why. Okay, okay. You, you, okay. Mm -hmm. on the cover I have kittens. Yeah, push it. Go to children. That's us. Okay. So we need to heal Hegel. Stop loving mm -hmm. Aristotle mm -hmm. and straighten the line. Mm -hmm. Okay? But that's not all. Bryce. Do you know anything about Bryce? Bryce. Mm -hmm. Great man. Mm -hmm. Bryce. Uh, his maxims. I am sure you, everyone knows about his maxims. Maxims of conversation are a set of observations that describe how people communicate when they want to be properly understood by others. There are only four maxims. All funny stories, uh, all comedies, 
are based on the violation on this maximum. So the first, maximum of quantity. Make your contribution as informative as is required. No more, no less. Good example, when I ask you, how are you? And you start telling me about your background, your relatives, your family, how you feel when you went to the doctors, what you bought, did you did, blah, blah, blah. That's what we do in research writing. So the response is, how are you? Fine, thanks. You? Goodbye. Right? Don't make your contribution more informative than is required. Leave out any unnecessary details. So, we speak about redundancies. It should be noted that. How many words do we have? It should be noted that. Five? Do you need all the words? Why not just write notably? That's it. So we have so many redundant words that do not add any value to the text. They are meaningless. Maximum of quality. Do not say what you believe to be false. And then our favorite phrase, to the best of my knowledge. What if you know little? What does it mean? Either you were lazy, that's all I know. And what I know, I write. Yeah? And we uh, we use all these bad words, probably, certainly, etc. In research, for editors, they, they say, avoid etc. Because that's your research writing. You, you have to show. To the best of my knowledge, we use this technology and this etc. That's the violation of this maximum. Oops. Don't, do not say that for which you lack evidence. No evidence, don't say anything. Or, go and do research. Okay? Find the right sources. We have, and we have Google Scholar, we have Web of Science, we have whatever. These days we have lots and lots and lots of oceans of different sources to where we can select. Uh, then, uh, maximum of relation, be relevant, mm -hmm. that's Kairos. Make sure that all information you provide is relevant for the current exchange and they meet irrelevant information. That, that's again about our deviations, this way, that way, by the way, and so on. Maximum manner, avoid obscurity of expression, avoid language which is difficult to understand because it may contain words that the reader does not know. That's what we need to focus on when we speak about international publications. So if we want to show how knowledgeable we are, that we know so many sophisticated words. But when we write for an international publication, you should also think about people whose language who, who's, who do not have English as their native language. In Russia, in Africa, in Asia, I don't know where. So everyone must understand what we want to say. That's what makes this publication international. Uh, avoid ambiguity. Avoid ambiguous language, which can, I, will, I will show you, I have lots of examples. Mm -hmm. uh, interpreted in multiple ways. Is this clear? Only four maxims. And it has, uh, it, it is relevant for hard science, for soft science, for Russian, for English, for any language, for any <coughs> discipline. And while giving a course on research writing, we need to start with this information. Before we speak about mechanics of the language, grammar, vocabulary, that comes last. Okay? Uh, and debrief. Because the main motive is less is more. <laughs> Do you remember this? 
mentioned Bien and Mule. That's about research writing. Less is more. But we need, that's not the question of contraction, that's the question of selection. So we need to select the right words. And my question to linguists, whose uh, vocabulary is the richest? Russian or English? English. No, how many words uh, are there in the English language? More are, uh, you mean, in comparison with Russian? This is a, maybe more than uh, two times bigger. I mean, they're the. Okay, so uh, how many words are there in the English language? Yes, two million. Two million. There is a number. <laughs> <laughs> there is a number. <laughs> Uh, okay, there in Chicago there is a company that registers all the words. And in 2005, I, I haven't seen the uh, 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 upgrade. Uh, they registered a millionth word. In our language, we have much fewer words. Mm -hmm. And so that a, a word enters the body of the language, uh, it has to be used in different sources. How many times? Mm -hmm. More than 25,000 mm -hmm. times. 25,000 times, and then it enters the board. So we have a wide choice. That's what I mean. Okay, that's the question of selection. So when you need to be brief, you can just select the right word instead of front fast, say just rush as an example. And be orderly. Provide information in an order that makes sense. And that's about logos, that's about the flow. Cognitive law theory, another very important thing. According to this theory, so uh, in uh, 1988, uh, John Swell wrote a paper, Cognitive law theory and problem solving effects on learning. Uh, the mind has a limited processing capacity, right? That's important for writing. Why so? Because when we start writing a research paper, we write endless sentences. Endless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, record. 75 words in a sentence. According to this theory, that's impossible to remember what was at the beginning. And then you have to go backwards. Yeah, you go backwards. Sorry. Okay, I just they forgot. Because of this theory. And uh, people can only process 79 pieces of new information at a time. We know this as language teachers, okay? Mm -hmm. Seven. Mm -hmm. Seven. Uh, which means that uh, the maximum length of a sentence should be how many words? Ten? Twelve? Difficult. Maximum 15, 18, that's maximum. Maximum. Okay? If your sentence is longer, then there's something wrong with your thinking process. You cannot concentrate, you cannot focus, you cannot select the right words. So if you have a sentence that has 30 words, just drag it into two, or probably three, or probably it, it is it, it should be noted that how many words? Extra words. You don't need this. So let's play this game. I don't remember how many I have. Uh, oh, good. So, uh, arrange them in order of priority. What comes first? What is the most important? There's, there should be a pyramid. Okay, what adds the base of this pyramid? What is the most important thing and what is the less important? Okay. <laughs> okay, punctuation is very important, by the way. Overall writing ability. Then quality of combat. Because if you cannot write, you don't have, have to do yeah, you, you And that's not the question ability. of English. That's not about English. Okay? So clarity is above all. 
if you are unclear in the way you are presenting your ideas, okay, you may forget about content. Who cares about your content if no one can understand what it is all about? Mm -hmm. Then, overall paper organization. It can be structured or non-structured, so there should be some flow. Okay. Then, uh, paragraph organization. Why is it that important? Uh, we couldn't care less about paragraphs, okay? What do we do? We start writing when we are tired of this paragraph, and then we start another paragraph, yeah, because we think it's too long in, in Russian, yeah? So, Leo Tolstoy is a good example. But in English they say, paragraphs give us some rest. Why? Think about yourselves while reading. You say, okay, you start reading no matter what. And you typically, okay, finish reading a paragraph and then you can have tea, coffee, okay, smoke, whatever. And now you have a long paragraph. You cannot stop reading because you have to finish this. Yeah? And they say paragraphs give either some rest. And there's some rhythm. Because in prose there's also rhythm, as in poetry. Yeah, and there's a difference between American and British. In uh, American English, we're speaking about ideal writing. Ideal writing. Paragraphs, they should have approximately the same length. Uh, 8, 10, 12 sentences maximum, because you cannot develop your thought in longer paragraphs. Okay? Either you have a thought or not. Okay? Uh, in British, they have three, long, three short one, long, three short one, long, three short one, long. Okay? That's their rhythmic pattern. But you may forget about this, but what you need to think about is uh, the length of your paragraph. Because if it is an ideally written paper, you may read just the first sentence in each paragraph. Because the sentence contains the talk. So you are in a hurry, you don't need to read the whole paper, or you have no time, or whatever. So the first sentence is the topic, and then you develop this idea, and then you conclude. Topic, development, conclusion. That's the structure. Yeah? We very seldom in, in, in our culture write this paragraph. Then vocabulary usage. Certainly, that's important. Vocabulary size. Yeah. Quality of sentence structure. Certainly. And then correctness of punctuation and spelling. Uh, stop me when you get tired because I have some examples about punctuation. And I will show you how important punctuation in the English language is, especially in research writing. Without punctuation, your paper will probably be unreadable. Okay? Aims and scope. So, what makes a research paper international? So, uh, physics communication, quite serious journal, citation score and input factor, and what do they write? The introduction to each paper should be directed to a general audience. That's what we very seldom do. Especially at the Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. They are very snobbish. They say, you don't understand my writing, my paper, then you don't belong to my field. Okay? Get out of my circle. But that's what they write. General. More. Impact factor is 8, quite high. Biology, cell biology, yeah, the very important. And they say, serves as an in invaluable source of information for researchers, lecturers, teachers, professionals, policy makers, and students. So you need to write in such a way that your paper is understood by broad audience, not very specific. So if you write about some very specific tiny things, better exchange emails. Right? Mm -hmm. Why so? Because publishing is business. They want to increase say, okay, readership. They need our money. And that is why they need to have more and more and more and more readers. And students and newcomers to the field. So there might be first year undergraduate students who are thinking about doing research, but they haven't decided where in particular they want to work. 
and they start writing a paper and they understand nothing. Oh no, that's not my cup of tea. Then 25. Impact factor. Okay? So this is physics report and what do they find? These reviewers are specialists in nature but contain enough introductory material to make the main points intelligible to a non-specialist. And that's not about English. Uh, and sufficient number, okay, and this is, but we'll also find a sufficient number of references to the original literature. So, what does it mean? Primary sources. Here? And more. Papers of rather specialized or of preliminary and descriptive content will normally not be considered. So the language should be international. It doesn't mean that you need to simplify, no. That's not the question of simplifying the writing. So that make it understood by everyone. Teachers, lecturers, non-specialists. And these are the commandments. Be clear, concise, and focused as possible without sacrificing the meaning of your writing. So you have to be clear, concise, and focused. What what makes it clear? Okay, select words, not terminate. Terminate, okay. Stop. Don't try to use language that only you understand. Mm -hmm. Then, uh -oh. uh -huh. keep your sentences as well as paragraphs reasonably short. Less is more. How long should your paragraph be? I said, okay, 15, 18 maximum. Okay, the book. But you need to vary. It doesn't mean that you each time you need to uh -huh, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. No, vary, but don't exceed this number. Mm -hmm. uh, then, according to the cognitive law theory uh, from that paper, uh, word length. 10 words, 20, and how much do you understand? Okay, so if you have 20 words in the sentence, you understand it's only 80% or what? When you have 30, 60%. Half. and stick to your choice. What does this mean? That's the, uh, the question of parallelism. I don't remember, in one of the presentations I saw uh, today, so parallel structure. Let's think about Julius Caesar. Uh -huh. He came. He <laughs> came. Came, soar, conquer, right? Mm -hmm. That's parallel structure. So I choose past simple. Yeah. I don't say he came, he was looking at everything around. Yeah. The same pattern. The same with pronouns, the same with tenses, the same with whatever. So you select one okay, for example, you Either you choose pronoun you or one, mm -hmm. or you choose personal pronouns I, we, mm -hmm. just to avoid this ambiguity. Yeah? Then think small, decide uh, what specifically you want to write about and make, uh, and make sure you stick to the subject, cover it well and stop. That's the focus. One thought, one sentence. One thought, one paragraph. One thought, one paper. Okay. We prefer to have lots of different thoughts in our sentence. This and that. Okay. Greedy. Greedy. 
frame and contextualize. What does this mean? Uh, very often researchers, they start immediately. We develop this methodology. Or we measure this something. Why? Why on earth you did that? Who cares about this methodology? So there should be some context. Why? The background. Very seldom we provide this background or context. And what about frame? Okay. Introduction and discussion. That's the paper. So methods and results, they are supporting information. Yeah? In the introduction, we ask a research question. In the discussion, we ask the question. That's the frame. And if we delete the middle, so that's what we have. So the background, the context, and then why on earth we need this methodology? And then in the discussion, we answer this question. As, 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 as an example, yeah? Those who are interested in the methodology and results, they will read. Because editors, they will start with methodology and results. Because that's important. The readers, we read like this. Conclusion, like my favorite part. Why? I don't know. Not because that's the end of the video. Yeah, but why? Why is conclusion the most interesting and the most important part? And what makes it different from an abstract? It provides answers for the question. Discussion. Discussion, conclusion. Interpretation. Interpretation, that's discussion. Perspectives. Acknowledgements, that's <laughs> methodology. Perspectives. Yes. That's the only section where you build the bridge to future. And if I find myself unable to write because I have no ideas, I start reading conclusions where I find ideas. Our researchers, they say, huh, if I write about future research and what I'm planning to do, someone will steal this. But to steal this, you need to know. You need to do research. It's a long way. But then you say, that's what we did. That's, what, that's where we are. And we need to go further, okay? And that's how science advances. In the conclusion, you have this, yeah? And if a conclusion is written well, then it gives you some hope that this is not the end. That's the beginning of further research, okay? Define all your terms the moment you first mention them. You think that it is obvious, but it is not obvious because some say, we know this. And I will give you a uh, language teachers, yeah? I will give you an abbreviation, EMI. Once I did this experiment, okay, my colleagues, language teachers, they say EMI, what do the letters stand for? For me, it's just like DNA. You know? No, not DNA, everybody knows. EMI. No, EAL. English as a medium of instruction. This is my DNA. My colleagues working in the same field did not know this abbreviation. And and then if you Google this, you will see that in different disciplines, these letters stand for different words. Okay? Uh, avoid the necessary jargon. Because people might not know jargon. And uh, you're not a language teacher? No. Very good. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I will give you my jargon words, okay? Uh, and you will tell me what it means, okay? Language teachers, they know that, I hope they know this very well. Drilling, drilling, what is this? Drilling, drilling, drilling. Yes, what is this? And this is my jargon. Uh-huh, that's the word that I use. Mm -hmm. 
Or, or, or to, uh, to make her nervous. In nervous? Yes, maybe. To make uh, someone uh, nervous. Uh, yes, this is just practicing, just practicing. Just uh, practicing. Uh, so we need to drill this grammar. Uh, uh, drill it grammatically. Uh, so this is just drilling. Yeah, this is my jargon. Yeah, I use it daily. Yeah, let's drill it. И вот это такое тебя типично, для, для преподавателя по местам это не типично дрельно, как это говорится. Нет? Типично. 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 Даже на русском больше. Да. Это то, что я имею в виду. Когда вы думаете, что все знают это? Вы имеете в виду, это джаргон для вашей специализации? Нет, для языка. Language teaching. Language teaching. Language teaching. Okay. Okay. Drill. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And there's some course books we have drills, 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 mm -hmm. just as a word. Drill. Drill. Drill okay. exercises. Okay. Drill okay. <laughs> exercises. Okay. okay. I uh, here is. Close. The first up. That's what I mean. E M I. Drill. Okay. That's the questions that you <coughs> or your students need to ask themselves when they start writing. Why am I doing this research? <laughs> Why on earth? Who cares? <laughs> you start with this question. Then what is my research story about? Because when you write a research paper, that's a compelling story. That's a, that's a story of your journey. And that's the climax of your research. Okay? When you show your product, your baby, you say, see how beautiful yes. it is? Yeah? What impact will my research have on individuals, society, and academia? Will it make any impact? Or only me mm -hmm. is interested in this <laughs> fabulous research? <laughs> How is my research different from other studies in the field? Or is it just the same, but with different words? Am I including all the necessary information? Again, price is maximus. I'm Am sorry, Helena, we have some questions in the chat. Would you answer, please? I could. Can you see them? I would if I could. <laughs> uh, can you or no? So, Just the first question. Just uh, a sec. Can yeah. you see them? Yeah. No. Chat, uh, this mouse is there. Yeah, yeah, the computer is. You should do it. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh oh. Okay. Shop. Just a sec. Good morning, morning. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> new language. <laughs> English. Okay. Do you plan to use more sound? During presentations, you don't know. Yes, it, it, it's it possible to mute temporary a microphone. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Can everyone please mute your microphone? <laughs> Why overall <laughs> with the this is the beginning. Right. with vocabulary? Uh, as, uh, okay, probably this question is. Yeah? yeah? No. Uh, so, why overall ability is not combined with vocabulary? Uh, as the basic foundation of the variant. Because uh, that's the question of whether you can write or not. Yeah. So that's not the question of uh, vocabulary. Mm -hmm. So if you cannot write per se, so you may have just, um, once I had a student and he decided to uh, learn, for those who remember those days of the Soviet Union, because I was born in the USSR, Tiny small pocket dictionary, okay? mm -hmm. yeah, uh, 2004 or something. Mm -hmm. You remember this? Oh yeah. And he decided that he, he needed to learn all the words. Yeah. He learned all those words. Yeah? He was an MIBT student, okay, obsessed, determined, and so on. But then he's like, okay, 2000, not enough. And then he decided to increase the vocabulary, and he learned the vocabulary. He he knew such words that nobody could understand, but he could not put these words together. No collocations, just separate words. And he said, just uh, like, block, ulitsa fanaretika. 
yeah, we, we, we have this background, we understood him, that he could not combine the words. And he, he was unable to speak, to use them in, the, in, in his speech. That's why, if you can write, if you know the, the logic of writing, then you can increase the vocabulary size. Uh, then, could you please clarify acronym? Oh, acronym, yes, I love this, acronym. Acronym and abbreviation. Uh, so an acronym is an abbreviation that can be read as a word, like basic uh, operational language, yeah? Uh, or uh, NATO, yeah? You never say N-A-T-O, yeah? Mm -hmm. or that's an acronym. Modest is an acronym, yeah? Uh, or, for example, BBC is an abbreviation. You never say, oops, oops. Yeah, you say BBC. But why do we need to know this? That's the question. Always why. Yeah? Why should we know this? The difference between acronym and abbreviation. Uh, with acronyms, we do not need articles. With abbreviations, we always need an article, the BBC. With an acronym, you may just use modest and modest. Uh, not always. Yeah, so that's your choice, whether you need an, an article. Uh, in terms of grammar, that's the only reason why you should know this difference. But acronyms are very important uh, if you write a grant proposal, because they always require yeah, an acronym for, for a project name. Mm. Yeah? And uh, there is a great tool, Acronym Creator. You may have a long sentence. And then it will create acronyms for you, and then you just choose this, this, that, which one you prefer. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's it? No more questions? No more questions. Thank okay. Uh, am I using the language that is clear? That's the question. Am I presenting the information in a structured, well organized, and logical way? Uh, these are the questions that. Very stubborn mouse. Yeah. Uh, if you are tired, we can just stop here because I have more, more, and more. If you wish, we may take a break, or if you wish, I can leave you the presentation. Mm -hmm. Whatever you prefer, whatever you say. That's your choice. Okay. What, what do we do? No, I Because I'm like Terminator, I can just talk and talk and talk. Stop me. Maybe <laughs> 15 minutes. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh. Minutes. Okay. okay. And then we'll get back. Yep. Yeah? Uh, or it will just, if you decide, I can give you the presentation if you wish. Yes, yes of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's yours. It is yours. Thank you. Okay, so um, was the, the message clear? Yes. So English is not that crucial. So English comes last. First you need to be able to write. Then you need to think about the rhetorical notes, uh, ethers, your credentials, Loggers, how logical you are, what evidence you provide, then patterns, how emotional you are, because that's a compelling story of your research. You need to show your emotions in research writing. We're not speaking about technical reports, that's different genre. And then there should be Kairos, appropriate time and place. Then cognitive load theory, less is more. Don't overload your readers with unnecessary words. Never forget about crisis maxims. Okay, how are you? I'm fine. That's it. Because that's enough. Yeah? And uh, never forget about Aristotle. Direct line from A to B, no deviations. You need to be focused. Okay? And only then you may think about content and so on. Clarity is above all. If you are clear, if you are concise, then you can publish your content because you may have best of the best content, 
but we write in such a way that no one can plow through. Kind of. And annually, by the way, uh, more than 8 million publications come out. And you need to stand up. To stand up, to be noticed. How can you be noticed? Writing, interesting, engaging, sometimes intriguing. Can you train or travel faster than light? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Okay? That's what research writing is about. It is very exciting. Uh, and I guess the best activity that you can imagine. Because it is very creative. So you pack your research. You pack your research. Okay? And this Wrapping should be beautiful and very attractive. Uh, those who lived in the USSR, do you remember the way we had to buy uh, sweets or chocolates? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, now we have beautiful wrappings. Probably this candy is not that tasty. Yeah. But you need to sell your research. To sell yourself. So you need to be wanted by others to be selected. I mean your publication. Of all thousands of different publications in the same field. And never forget about writing for international publications. Which means that you need to write for broader audience. Yeah? This book is interesting. Thank you very much. Okay. So that's it. We continued one one day. Okay, thank you. Questions? <laughs>